Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm here from Lumix UK to talk to you about anamorphic shooting. And a little bit about my journey with anamorphics. Now, initially, uh, anamorphic cylinders, um, they were used for tanks and submarines during World War I, and that was to allow the operator a wider view um, of the world outside, so he could have a better field of view. It wasn't until kind of uh, 1927 where anamorphics were used for cinematography and photography. And that's when 20th Century Fox bought the rights um, for, for the technology um, in order to attract people back to cinema. Because um, before that, cinema was shooting roughly like 4 by 3 1.33 by 1 And um, TVs just came out, so people had TVs in their home. Why would I need to go to the cinema to get the same experience? Maybe like projected a bit bigger, but still that same aspect ratio. Um, so CinemaScope was used to create that widescreen um, experience, bigger than four by three. It actually made it into a two point three nine by one, which is now a, a standard for cinema. Um, back then, it was a requirement. Today it's a choice because now we've got so much resolution um, in our cameras that we can actually crop the top and bottom and export that in to uh, 0.39 by 1. So right now, um, anamorphic is more of a choice and I'll be talking a bit about that. So before that, I just want to show you this. Now, this is essentially my anamorphic run and gun setup and it consists of parts of a shoulder mount um, just my preference I don't really need a lot to, to, to be comfortable when I'm shooting I just need that braced and um, that's a Lumix S5 there which has some great anamorphic modes which I'll be talking about this is my anamorphic setup obviously you've got the cage um, and we've got the wireless follow focus and the focus wheel there and then we've got our anamorphic um, well, not just anamorphic, our, our, our heavy lens support system here to support the lens. Although L mount is quite strong, I still like to put the lens support on there as well. Um, and that's my run and gun setup. What is anamorphic and when do you use it? So think of it this way. A circular or spherical lens, like a regular photography lens, is made up of circular pieces of glass. These pieces of glass are called lens elements. And when light passes through these elements, and hits the, the digital sensor, or if you're shooting film, hits the film stock, this is going to produce an uncompressed, regular image. Anamorphic lenses, at the front, it's a cylindrical element, and at the rear of the lens, you still have those circular elements. But if you look through the anamorphic, like what I'm going to show you, it will appear that it has an oval kind of shape. And then when that when the light passes through the cylindrical element, through all of those spherical um, and circular elements, then you're going to get a very squeezed, a very compressed image, which is meant to be de-squeezed when you get to the editing, when you get to the post-processing um, of your workflow. If you're using like Premiere or DaVinci or any kind of modern day um, pro editing program, that they'll have the de-squeeze function, or you could just do it yourself meaning that your end result is going to be a wider image so like some anamorphic zoom lenses or some like the zeiss kind of master anamorphics they have the anamorphic uh, or cylindrical glass element at the rear but this can reduce some of the characteristics of using an anamorphic lens such as flaring and oval burkhair now anamorphics are arguably the reason why widescreen or wide a wider aspect ratio is used in cinema in early cinema, when the TVs became popular, there was a decline in people attending the cinema because they played at the same aspect ratio of the TVs. So they did try to innovate with things like 3D, which people still kind of go to the cinema to watch today with the glasses. But at the time, they had kind of like Cinerama, which was effectively three different projectors uh, angled so that you would have three separate screens that would pay, play the same uh, image. But this was quite inefficient. So people were scrambling, looking for ideas, and someone came across um, the Hypergona, which is an early anamorphic adapter, which goes on like the front of your lens or um, the front of the projector. 
and it's able to singularly fill a much wider screen. So have a look at films like The Robe or How to Marry a Millionaire. And these were kind of shot early cinemascope uh, with 20th Century Fox. Um, and you'll be able to understand why some people still shoot anamorphic today. Um, but effectively those films allowed the, the director, the cinematographer, the whole production to shoot widescreen um, just using one camera. So the first feature you may notice about anamorphic is that it shoots wide. So, or, or a wider aspect ratio. Common aspect ratios that you may see are four by three, which is 1.33 by one, or 16 by nine, which is 1.85 uh, by one. Um, but common aspect ratios that you'll see in cinema are 2.35 by one, and 2.39 by one. These are common, these are wider aspect ratios. Another feature you may notice is the oval shaped bokeh, as opposed to the standard circular shaped bokeh. Flaring is another key characteristic of the anamorphic lenses. And this is the light hitting the cylindrical element at the front of the lens. And that can cause you to, that can cause it to give horizontal flares in your footage. Distortion is another key feature you may notice. So objects will look thinner on the edge and more proportionate in the center of the lens. Um, sharpness is another feature you may notice. So for example, um, well, I mean, generally uh, spherical lenses are a lot sharper than the anamorphic counterparts, but anamorphics can provide a more kind of aesthetically pleasing organic look because they give you the same compression as a 50 but they give you a wider field of view when, when you look at it. So roughly about a 50 will roughly equate to like a 25 mil in terms of the field of view that you're seeing, but it also has a nice kind of softness about it. But some like, like the, the, the new anamorphics, like some of the master primes and some from um, uh, Atlas, um, they make some fantastic, very sharp anamorphic lenses. So think of this way, when you shoot on a 50 mil or 50, 70, 90 mil, and you're doing a portrait of someone. They look nice, natural, their face looks very, um, like your eye would see it. Whereas if you shot that portrait on a 24 mil, then you might notice that you might notice their face is a lot wider. But anamorphics can give you that wider view, but keep the same compression of a 50. So you can have nicer, wider shots, or you can have more in your, more in your scene going on. Um, when you're when you're doing it. it's just different different way of shooting You would use anamorphic lenses Well it when you have to use it is like say for example You've given a strict delivery brief to use anamorphics for cinema or you want to make it easier to deliver a um, uh, They want you to deliver it in a DCI scope they want it, Yeah, they want you to deliver your footage in a DCI scope which is a 2.39 uh, uh, aspect ratio, which is a common aspect ratio that's played in cinemas. Um, you can, you're able to do this without losing resolution a lot quicker with, with anamorphic lens. But anamorphic is a creative choice now that requires some technical understanding. So for example, some people think that you get a wider aspect ratio by literally adding a letterbox or uh, yeah, adding a letterbox to the top and bottom of a frame and then deliver that in 16 by 9. Don't, don't do that. Um, if you just crop the top and bottom, make sure you have enough res resolution to do so. So for example, if you shoot 4K and then deliver to 1080p, then yeah, crop the top, crop the bottom so that you get a lovely 2.39 uh, aspect ratio. When choosing to shoot anamorphic for your project, your aspect ratio is going to be wide. So you need to consider things like your camera requirements. Does your camera allow you to shoot anamorphic easily? Like speed up your workflow. These following full frame cameras have anamorphic support. So the Lumix S1H, S1 um, and the S5. They support industry standard two times anamorphic lenses by utilizing a 
1.33 um, by 1 or 4 by 3 area of the sensor and then you can de-squeeze that to produce uh, uh, 2.66 by 1 um, and then you can just crop a tiny bit and then you can deliver that to DCI uh, 2.39 by 1 without losing a lot of resolution. Alright so what I've done is I've completely reset my camera um, to show you how I set up my camera for anamorphic shooting. Um, but first I'm going to set up just for general kind of video recording then I'll get into the, anim uh, the anamorphic settings. So first things first, I've got my 50 mil um, anamorphic setup on so I need to change the settings so I'll go to yes then to 50 mil or oh, I'll change that but I've got it there so 50 mil go to set okay so then um, the first thing that you should do when you're setting up for video is you go to exposure mode menu exposure mode change that to manual um, and then I this is preference but I change my um, uh, gain up uh, my shutter speed to shutter angle and then what I usually do is I shoot in vlog all the time so I'm gonna go to vlog Boom, pop that in vlog. Um, what you may notice actually is, well, you can't really see it. That's all good, that's all good, that's all good. Bro, so that's all sorted. Oh, wait. Then I go to monitor display video, turn on uh, VLOOK view assist, turn that on. The lot's already VLOOK to Rec 7 and 9, so that's all good. Now you can see that it's way too dark. My shutter angle's 11 degrees, so that needs to change. So I'm going to put that on the standard 180. And there we go. Now that's roughly all set up to, to, to do any type of um, video. Let me actually just take this off uh, auto white balance and I'm going to put that on daylight. Put my ISO to the first, uh, the second native, which is 4000. Alright. <clears throat> so then what you can clearly see is the outside. Um, you're seeing the outside, or sorry, you're seeing the inside of the anamorphic projection lens. And this is because that the anamorphic uh, projection lens generally um, are set up for super 35 millimeter sensors um, or APS-C style sensors. So currently the S5 is shooting uh, and utilizing the full frame sensor. So we're seeing a much wider, uh, much larger field of um, field of view. Uh, we're seeing the full field of view. So that will all be solved because what you've got on this, if I go back to the top, is that you have the So then we go to image format one, we go to anamorphic four by three, and when you go to the settings, you'll instantly see everything. So it's going to be shooting in MOV, APS-C, um, and I'm going to sh use the uh, 25 frames, 10-bit, uh, 422, CS5, so long to go up, um, and yeah, select that. And it's going to tell you that it's going to change the aspect ratio to four by three to accommodate for the lens. So you press yes. So now it's going to be shooting at a 1.33 by one uh, aspect ratio. We go to others video menu. We go to image stabilizer and we're actually going to turn on the anamorphic um, stabilization. And it's going to give you the options for what 
what times uh, squeeze your anamorphic lenses. So it's got 1.3, 1.33, 1.5, 1.8, and two times. Now I'm using a two times squeeze anamorphic lens. So that's the one I select. And now the camera is optimized um, st uh, for stabilization of an anamorphic 50mm um, lens. It's brilliant. We've got the correct shooting style. Um, but the, the, the inside of the barrel is gone, but you can still see that it's all squished. And it's very hard, well, you can do it, but it's very hard to um, to compose uh, a scene or shoot a, a, an image and pull focus when the image is squeezed like this. So um, the, the cameras that I, I suggested before, they have a de-squeeze function. So what you need to do is go to settings, go to monitor display video, you go to anamorphic de-squeeze display. And just like the stabilization, it gives you the options of 1.3, 1.33, 1.5, 1.8, and two times um, de-squeeze. So of course, we've got two times squeeze lens, so we need two times de-squeeze display. So as soon as I do that, what you'll notice is that it's de-squeezed. And now I can compose perfectly for what it is that I need to do. So that's sorted. Then this is an extra thing that I like to do, but um, because I usually export in, uh, my aspect ratio is 2.39 by one. That's what I like to export to. Um, so I'm actually going to change that. So the frame markers match that. So then what you need to do is you go to monitor display photo, go to the first one. And then you go to frame marker and set. Now frame aspect. Now my frame aspect is going to be, there it is, 2.39 by one. So I'll select that. And I literally just completely mask off the rest of it. So now, oops, so I'll turn that on. So now, when I go back, that's my final um, screen that I use. This helps me to compose my image for what I'm going to export it at. Um, so then I know that I am not gonna have any half ins, half out, or anything cut off or cropped when I finalize my, my, my footage when I finalize my, my, my short film or the project that I'm working on. Um, everything's easily monitored and, and I'm good to go. And then you've got other things like focus peaking, everything that you use. Um, and of course, if you're using an external monitor, sometimes I use the Ninja 5. And then now with the update, you can use the um, Blackmagic uh, View Assist uh, 12G as well. Um, and they've got their options on there as well for, for anamorphic de-squeeze and, and aspect ratio frame marking and all of that. So yeah, that's how you shoot, um, well, that's how you set up to shoot anamorphic. Well, our Micro Four Thirds cameras such as the GH5, GH5S, BGH1 um, are natively 4x3. The sensor is natively um, in a 4x3 aspect ratio, Micro Four Thirds. Um, so they all support two times anamorphic shooting, uh, two times anamorphic uh, lenses. So using the squeeze factor such as 1.33 times or 1.8 times, they all support that also. The main reason really for shooting 1.33 um, is to get a 2.39 image output with like no waste on a 16 by nine sensor. But some cons are that you don't get much of the anamorphic characteristic um, that a two, two times or a 1.8 times lens um, would, would, would do. And also shooting two times on a 16 by nine sensor, uh, when you de-squeeze that, you'll get super wide um, aspect ratio. And therefore you would have to, <clears throat> and therefore you'd have to crop so much and you'll lose so much resolution. 
uh, that sometimes it's not really worth it to actually do that. Another thing that you'd have to consider is lighting. Generally, anamorphics are slower than spherical lenses. Um, so for example, generally anamorphics, they might stop down to f2 or, or t2.8. Um, so you need to consider some more powerful light sources as some spherical lenses can go down to 0 0.95 or 1.8. Another thing you need to consider is your set size. So let's say you're shooting the scene, um, but it's your first time using a 50 more anamorphic and you didn't do a recce. So now you've put the anamorphic on, you've de-squeezed it, you notice that you're seeing a lot more in your frame. So you need to dress more of your set. So that's another thing um, to consider because you might be shooting a 50 mil, but you'll be roughly getting um, a wider field of view than 50. Another thing you need to consider is that nearly all uh, anamorphic lenses are, well, yeah, generally all anamorphic lenses are manual focus. So you need to get some type of follow focus solution um, or wireless follow focus solution. Uh, also something to consider is that spherical lenses have a closer minimal focus um, distance than um, anamorphic lenses. So for anamorphic lenses to get like a close, uh, extreme close up, you need to use a diopter or otherwise known as a, a close focusing lens or a macro, um, a close focusing filter or a macro, macro uh, filter. Um, so of course, any glass that you put in front of your lens um, can alter the can alter the image quality. So you need to pick uh, a, a filter that has the image quality to your liking. Um, you need to consider your lens mounts because most anamorphics they come in either PL or EF. So some of the higher end ones, like some of the Cooks, um, they'll come in PL, uh, and some of the more kind of affordable ones, like the, the Atlas. Um, they'll come in um, EF or or the, the, the Siri will come in uh, micro four thirds as well. So you really need to consider that you've got the mounting options or the, the correct converters to convert to your camera that you're using it with. So if it's um, if you're shooting uh, EF, then you need an EF adapter to L. So um, you could get like the MC21 adapter by Sigma, or if you're doing it to micro four thirds, then you can use a, a, a Metabones um, uh, converter from EF to Micro Four Thirds, for example. And again, if you use a speed booster, then that's going to alter um, your field of view also. So you need to bear that in mind. Right, so there are actually two different ways to go about shooting anamorphic. You can use an anamorphic lens, which is a complete solution. Um, so you get the lens, you buy or you rent the lens, you pop it on, you don't have to worry about anything, you just manually focus, it's got the, the, cine, the cine ring and you're good to go. Um, examples like Hawk, Panavision, Cook, Zeiss, uh, these can all be extremely expensive and like I said, st studios or, or individuals, um, they usually rent them for their productions. Other anamorphics that are kind of more for consumers or just lower cost are things like Atlas, Viru, Siru, and um, some rehoused anamorphic that's put in a complete solution. Another way to go about shooting anamorphic is uh, to use an anamorphic adapter. Now these are different from uh, 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 anamorphic lenses because they are not complete. They're usually a projection lens or the cylindrical element um, uh, at the front, such as like a Koa 16D or a Koa BNH or Iskarama or Batch and Loom um, projection lenses um, or an uh, Ultra Star. Um, and some newer uh, adapters are made by um, SLR Magic, uh, SLR Magic and Amorphot. And these are all adapters that can like screw to the, to a, a, a spherical lens. These are usually a lot cheaper. So you can, they range from like, you can pick up an anamorphic um, adapter or a projection lens um, from between like 200 pounds to 2000 pounds. 
and all of these can be adapted to fit on any spherical lens such as a uh, like a S series 85mm 1.8 or a Lumix a Micro Four Thirds 12 to 60 or like just any kind of like nifty 50. The, um, so they're very cost effective. Um, and they're also completely cost, uh, you can customize them to, to, to however you want. You can customize them to your preference. So you can change things, having different ad adapters have different uh, lens flares. They have different types of distortion, different sharpness, just a different feel. It's also a lot of work to get them complete. Anamorphic adapters take a lot more work to get up and running. And you need to consider the costs of the components needed to build a Frankenstein lens. The first kind of component needed to build a Frankenstein lens um, is going to be your, is, you're going to have to choose what anamorphic adapter that you want to use, what um, anamorphic projection lens. So when purchasing, you also need to consider um, what the quality is. So for example, majority of projection lenses a majority of projection uh, lenses are quite vintage so you need to make sure that there's no hazing no fungus no scratches or chips on the lens there are also some companies that make brand new anamorphic adapters such as the slr magic anamorpho um, and so you'll need to check videos online to see um, uh, what kind of anamorphic adapter you like because some will have green blue um, or golden flaring uh, some adapters are sharper than others and some are softer but in a more organic way so for example I chose just here I don't know if you can see that but I chose the Koa uh, Bell & Howells um, anamorphic adapter two times next you need to consider your taken lens so the taken lens is the uh, circular elements or the spherical lens that you're going to attach the adapter to and you're going to put that on the taken lens and then you're going to attach your taken lens to your camera. Um, but again, this is a Leica R, so I've actually needed to get an adapter, a Leica R adapter to a L mount um, adapter to put onto the camera. So you need to make sure that you have the correct adapters to, to, to fit that on. If you're using a modern photography lens, like a 50mm 1.8, then that will go straight onto a camera. These, all these things you need to consider before you pop them on. And you need to make sure that they're strong um, adapters if you're going to get one. You don't want to buy a plastic adapter. And also you need to make sure that your adapter um, is able to focus to infinity. That's another important factor as well. So you also need to consider what focal length your uh, taken lens is. Because if your taken lens is too wide, you're gonna see some vignetting. And vignetting occurs because the, 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 the field of view is so wide that it's seeing the inside of the anamorphic adapter. Um, so you need to be careful. I mean, anything really below um, 40 mil will significantly vignette. Um, so bear that in mind. So 40 mil and plus and you should be fine. Your taken lens again also affects your image quality. So make sure um, it's a lens that you like the look of. Autofocus will not work um, when you're using an adapter. And if you try to autofocus whilst the adapter's on your lens, if you have a, if you have a modern lens that does autofocus, um, if you try to focus with the adapter on your lens, then that can damage the focusing motor on your lens and you won't be able to use it for regular photography or videography after that. So like I said, I'm using the Leica R 50mm f2, mainly because it's super strong uh, and I like the look of it. Uh, a clamp is what's going to attach to the rear of your projection lens and it's going to give it a filter thread. And so the filter thread can then be screwed on to the, the filter thread of your taken lens. So things you need to make sure is that your filter thread, your, your clamp is strong um, and that your lens is strong as well. If your um, if if the clamp that you get and you want to use it on different lenses, you can buy step up and step step down rings to to put them on. But this will affect um, things like um, the stability of your lens. So if you're going to do that, make sure that you get a strong um, step up ring. So the clamp company I recommend is Red Stand, and just any kind of um, 
uh, sh- uh, strong metal step up ring um, is going to be fine. Next, you need to consider um, how you're going to focus your lens. So, if you just have the animal foot adapter and the taken lens, um, you're probably going to end up double focusing. I mean, double focusing is okay. Um, it does require some some skill, and some people are excellent at doing this. But usually, if you're trying to focus your taken lens and your anamorphic lens at the same time, it can get very fiddly. And then if you're doing things with a lot of motion, you can get some out of focus shots. So I recommend getting a single focus solution, which is what I have just here. Um, This bit here. And effectively, what you need to do is you actually need to put your taken lens in infinity and put your anamorphic adapter in infinity and then yeah you'll be able to focus by using your taken lens and that uh, you'll be able to focus by using your single focus solution and the single focus solution that i'm using is the hardcore dna um made in liverpool and i'll put a link in uh below as well so you can have a look at that yeah, so what you're seeing here is the lens um, broken down. Um, so, for example, this right here, that is a single focus solution, which is attached to the anamorphic adapter, which is the two times anamorphic for Bell and Howe, that's the COA. There, that's the anamorphic adapter. Now, you have the clamp. Once you loosen those screws, it allows for the rotation. And this is so that you can get alignment a lot quicker. So Red Stand make these fantastic clamps. And on the back of this clamp, what I've done is that I put a step up ring. Um, and this step up ring attaches directly to my taken lens, which is over here. So my, oh, so my taken lens is the uh, Simicron uh, Leica R fifty mil. Simicron um, Leica R fifty mil, and then my adapter is the Novaflex. Like a R to L mount, and that goes on to my S5. The other lens that I also use on this adapter is the again well used um, is the Leica R 90mm Simicron as well. Very strong lenses. And then I also do anamorphic on the micro four thirds as well. So I use the Lumix R to L, uh, R to micro four thirds adapter. Just All right. So then after you've done that, you need to make sure that your cylindrical element, so your, your, your anamorphic adapter is aligned. So it's straight and you can do this by shining a torch um, or yeah, the, the light from your phone into the lens and then you want to make sure that the lens flare is perfectly horizontal and once it is that means that your lens is aligned so you can pop it on your camera <clears throat> and start shooting um, I mean so you can be confident that your footage is going to be aligned and once all the pieces are put together um, you're going to have a complete anamorphic solution Um, and not only have you got a complete anamorphic solution you've learned a lot about the mechanics of how a lens actually works Um, and it looks um, amazing so again I'll show you some of uh, my footage that I've shot using this exact uh, rig as well
Working with anamorphic in post-production, the only thing you have to remember to do with anamorphic footage uh, in post-production is you have to remember to disqueeze it. So for example, in DaVinci, um, uh, which is what I use, I place, all my anam uh, I place all my anamorphic footage in the media section. I then select all, right click, go to clip attributes. And because I'm using a true two times adapter, I select CinemaScope, which is the original two times, and then it will de-squeeze to the correct proportions. Premiere Pro is slightly different. Um, and then after you've de-squeezed it, um, you've got that in your timeline and you can work with it like you would do any other footage. So some takeaway tips is that um, anamorphic lenses and anamorphic adapted lenses can be very heavy. So make sure you have good lens support and a good mounting system. L mount is actually extremely strong. It can handle a high amount of weight. Um, other mounts may bend, um, and I'm actually talking about the actual in-camera mount, so they may bend, so you have to make sure you pick a strong uh, mount. 